Can you hear me now? Uh, like antivirus tools, 
uh, cross-sections integrity checkers like SVU, which I'm going to introduce you in, in just a few seconds. Uh, and other things I, I will speak about in a minute. So we have tools which check integrity of some operating system elements. Uh, so this is the explicit uh, compromise detection. And we also have cross view based approaches, which are uh, which bases on the fact that uh, we have two methods implemented, like for example, two methods for, for listing the, the, the processes in the, in the system. And one, one method is very deep, like it, it uses some very, uh, very sophisticated method which bases on, uh, on, on looking at internal kernel structures. And the other method is very simple, it just uses the standard, standard IP or just uses some standard system programs. And they just compare the, uh, the results from, from both of them. And of the processes which, are, which were reported by, by, the, uh, by the first one that were, were marked as hidden. Uh, Rootkit Revealer is the example of this cross field based approach, or the Microsoft recent project uh, Ghostbuster, Strider Ghostbuster is also, also in this category. And finally, we've got signature based approaches, uh, well, which are just scanning for non, non malware and are very ineffective. So today we, we are going to discuss this, this, uh, this stuff. So the program which I'm giving you today, uh, System Virginity Verifier, uh, is based on the, on the very simple observation. Uh, all code sections uh, of modules mapped into memory, like system DLLs or, or, or well, just, just the code sections. Uh, Code sections are read only, right? Code is read only. Uh, most modern operating systems either forces, either recommends. Uh, the, the program cannot modify its code. Yeah, this, is, this is obvious, right? Yeah. But I, I would like to to make sure that this is obvious for everyone. Like, uh, we, we have we have program. The program can, uh, is compromised compromises of, of code sections, data sections, and some other sections, and code sections should be read only. So the idea, and of course many rootkits, user mode rootkits, work uh, by hooking code, so they, they make inline code hooking, and this inline code hooking, well, is, is just putting some jumps in front of the uh, function products, for example. So the idea is very simple, to catch all those rootkits just to compare all the in-memory mapped code sections with the corresponding sections in the corresponding PE files for the corresponding modules. So for example, we've got TCP IP sys module. This is, this is the file. This is the file which is located somewhere in uh, C slash Windows slash system32 slash drivers directory, directory. And we also have uh, memory. And somewhere in the kernel memory there is a module which is called TCP IP sys. So to make sure that nobody hooked code in this TCP IP pieces, but you only just compare the, the code section with the code section in the corresponding file on disk. If they are different, we have infections. If they are not, we have no infections uh, of this class of rootkit. This, is, this sounds very, very, very simple, but uh, we see that there are some, some problems. Of course, we need to, we, we, we shouldn't forget about doing fix-ups, so result all the relocations, so, uh, so that the, all, the, all, the, all the places where, where uh, addresses, absolute addresses are referenced will be the same, because we are making byte-to-byte -byte, uh, comparison. Is it, is it clear? Should I go faster or slower? Is it too simple or just, just okay? Uh, okay. Uh, this idea, this is this is the very simple idea. I was speaking about this idea for years, and surprisingly, for years I have seen no tool to make this uh, code section comparison or to make this code section uh, verification. Uh, one tool which which I was always using in the past. Uh, it was kernel debugger, and I was using, using check image command, which we will see in the demo just in a few minutes. And, and that's all. And that's funny because this is one of the basic things which we should uh, which we should make sure that the, the well, 
the code virginity is one of the first things we should make sure if we are talking about system compromise. Uh, system compromise detection. So this, this idea is very simple, but unfortunately it's not very simple when we start implementing it. Uh, implementing it. Uh, first of all, um, rootkit technology, so called rootkit technology, so uh, in this case inline code hooking. Inline code hooking is uh, widely used by many other tools which are not rootkit. Tools like personal firewalls, behavior blocking systems, uh, some monitoring tools like, like for example, well, some Kaspersky antivirus or whatever. Uh, system tracing tools uh, like debug view or file monitor or many other uh, tools which, which, which hook something in the, in the, the LS or, or maybe in the service description table just to, just to, just to uh, control the flow of, of, of execution. So, uh, because SVV, uh, as I said, is, uh, uh, was a module for commercial antivirus system, uh, we obviously need to, need to take care of, of detecting the false positives and not, not uh, report it as, as, as infections. So this is the one problem. How to deal with, with innocent hooking? Innocent hooking, so hooking by this, this level tools. But uh, first, another problem, uh, well, I noticed another problem which I didn't know about it before this, and this was self-modifying kernel in Windows. So as I said, at the, at the beginning I said, uh, all code sections should be read-only, right? And this is a very, very obvious, obvious thing. Unfortunately, two modules, two core modules of Windows operating systems uh, are exemption from, from this rule. Uh, those two modules are NTOS kernel, which is so the, the core kernel, and how they are. Maybe it's a good time for demo now. Can you switch the... Got Windows XP here, but it doesn't really matter if it's Windows XP or Windows 2002 or Windows 2003. So this is uh, this is this is command line, and this is uh, can you see this? This is KD. This is kernel debugger. I will try to make the phone bigger. Okay, can you see this now? I have to okay. So there's a good no there's one on checking each command, which we can use to verify. To verify well, particular module. Here it says zero errors in module and there was kernel exit. Zero errors means that uh, kernel, well, what, what KD just, just, uh, just did? It just, uh, just did the same thing which SVV is, is going to do. It just reads the NTUS kernel exit from the, from the uh, file system, compares to uh, some uh, relocations, compare it with the, uh, with the module mapped in the, in, the, in, the, in the memory. And says no differences. And we are happy because no differences, so code is read only and this is okay. Unfortunately, this is, this is cheating because if we use no spets option, which instructs kernel debugger not to filter out known kernel code self-modification, we can see that in fact there are four places in this kernel which were modified. Those errors means uh, the, five, the, the code on the disk is different than the code in memory. Uh, do you have an idea why, why Windows kernel does such thing? Anybody? I can I can read you the, the name of the functions. It's uh, the name of the functions which body was uh, was uh, modified. This is uh, RTL prefetch memory non temporal. Uh, the next function is uh, key flash current TV. The another one is KI system call exit branch. So this sounds like functions which which deal with well, synchronization or some low level stuff. 
And in fact, the reason for this is that the Windows kernel uh, adjusts to specific hardware which is run on and changes some part of the function for the, uh, for the to have to have better uh, for speed, yeah, to be more effective. I was speaking with, with someone from Microsoft about this problem. Why why is it done like this? And why isn't it possible to make a separate code section, let's say, well, add text, for example, and put all the functions into the separate add, sec add section? Uh, so it would be very, very easy to, to know that those modifications are just kernel modification and these are not, these are not uh, infection alarms. And the answer for this is, of course, uh, the speed, because the, as, I, as, I, as he said, as he said, uh, the kernel is optimized. The kernel code is optimized in such a way that, that uh, it feeds into specific caches. So the, each, the the position of each function should be well, like it, like it is, and it would it would make an impact on eff effectivity. If, if we move it to the other section. So, uh, no matter if it's, if it's really true or not, uh, we need to deal with this, with this kernel modifications because in other, in other, in other, um, in other case, we will make lots of false positives. No matter if it's, if it's really true or not, uh, we need to deal with this with this kernel modifications because in other in other in other, um, in other case we will make lots of false positives. These are the modifications in whole module, whole DLL, hardware of sex We see a little bit more modifications, but the observation here, which is very very useful, is that all modifications replaces uh, nodes with some with some with some body. So we can expect that that these were the, the, the places left to be to be filled upon well, execution. So it's easy to, to filter it out. Can you can you switch to the to the slides? So, if you want to avoid whole, whole modifications, we can just we can just uh, make use of these observations. Uh, that if it's all to XX, then then it's a well, uh, then it's a kernel kernel self modification, and it would be very difficult to write a rootkit, in my opinion, which would work by just modifying those those files. Actually, it would be very difficult to write a rootkit which would work by modifying whole whole file section, and this is the this is the reason why I don't check how section integrity in SVP. Although you can use the switch A to check all modules, but in the default, uh, default it's uh, uh, in default mode it's not checked. And the last kernel is more problematic because it's very important model from the rootkit point of view or backup point of view. And uh, there are lots of stuff which can be altered by rootkit to to assess on many, many systems. I'll just not do something. So it's a one byte modifications. Uh, so this is pretty obvious because somebody put it up just 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 to mark that this may be modified in the future. And the rest are just just modifications which are more than one byte long and just just uh, the number of them is very little. And of course it's it's very difficult to write a rootkit which would if not impossible, uh, I think it's impossible, which would work by just one byte modifications, right? Okay, this was the demo which I showed you. Any questions up to this point? Is it clear or, yeah? Uh, okay, now, now about innocent cooking. Uh, so, uh, not making alarms where there's uh, antivirus monitor or something like this. So, first we need to, uh, I would like to Define several types of hooking which you can observe in the system. But before this, just just a, a, a small definition: uh, what is missing and hidden files. What I mean by missing and hidden files. So.
So file is missing when create files and this file uh, returns error of files. Uh, so the files are present basically. And file is hidden when file first file or file next file on one of the of this file on one of the directory which contains this file fails. But in most cases, all hidden files are not missing. Is that clear? <coughs> For example, if we install well, hacker defender root git in a folder root rooted, right? And so hacker defender will make it uh, invisible, this, this folder, right? So if we if we list the direct the c slash directory, we didn't see the we, we will not see rooted folder. So find first file will, will does not will, will not return this this this, this directory, directory right? But if we try if we know the name of the magic directory and if we try to 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 execute create file on this path, it will uh, succeed, right? So this is important to distinguish hidden and missing files. Any question? Anybody confused by this? Okay, typical innocent hooking uh, is like this. This is the function which we hook. For example, this function might be uh, kernel uh, debug print function, and it will be hooked by debug uh, debug view that says module my system internals. If you, if you use debug view my system internals, uh, and it will just just hook to some other function which will be in debug sys module or whatever. Or if we, if we consider an antivirus monitor, this could be, for example, um, I don't know, um, read file, right? Read file or create file, and it will it will transfer execution to to the root uh, antivirus uh, provided function. Uh, and the observation is this, this function will be located in a valid module, and this module will be uh, will well, will has corresponding image file which will not be missing nor nor hidden. Well, it should be obvious that the rootkit cannot use this this type of hooking because rootkit is interested in hooking in hiding uh, its file, so it will not be uh, visible. Malicious hooking. This is what I what I just said. So. Uh, this could be like this. Uh, we transfer the execution to some module, but the module uh, file is hidden. But it may be present. Debugger like hooking. Uh, this is this is actually used used by most of the most of the tools like like the like the system monitors from Sysinternals. Uh, they they were they are just one execu executable well like uh, like registry monitor, right? Red, red, red one. Redmond consists of one module, one executable module, but uh, when we run it, it extracts from its resource section, it, ex it extracts uh, driver, like so, like something that says, and put it, put it in Windows uh, Center into drivers directory, loads it, and then deletes the file. So we have a situation when, when the hooker's code is in the uh, valid module, and the corresponding image file is not hidden, but doesn't exist. Another malicious hooking. Uh, this is mostly used by more advanced rootkits. Uh, again, we have a uh, hooked function. Well, let's say it's uh, well, registry uh, rec key and uh, and no, like registry key enumeration, is hooked to the rootkit code, and the rootkit code does not belong to any module in memory. So if we if we check if we check uh, if we, if we, if we um, traverse the list of loaded modules, we don't find the modules uh, which has start and end address, which will con which could contain this, this code. So again, this is an obvious sign of the, of the, of the malicious code. And to be complete, yet another uh, possibility is that uh, rootkit does not use simple hooking because all those things, as you probably just noticed, uh, requires that SVV or any other uh, code integrity checker will resolve this code as a as a proper assembly will disassemble properly. So. So the SVB can now the target address. 
If this is jump of something, we need to decode the jump of code. We need to add the, the address to the relative address or, and, and find the target address, right? But the rootkit can use some obfuscated code, like some polymorphic code uh, to make this jump. Okay, put the jump somewhere here or what? Can make it obfuscated. So uh, the code integrity verifier will not be able to, de to decode the target address. Right? And For example, recently I saw on rootkit.com an article how to bypass Vice. Vice is uh, another, another integrity-based detector written by Jamie Butler, and um, it doesn't work like SVV. It doesn't compare code sections. It just searches for jumps at the, at the function prolog, and if it uh, finds a jump, it will, it will report it as a, as a, uh, as a infection. But so, so, the, so, the, so this author, which I don't remember, developed technique to, to make it obfuscated, so, so Vice will not, will not check it, will not find it. But in our case, this is, this is not a problem for us, because if we detect code which we don't know how to resolve, which don't know how to, how to decode, we just say, okay, this is malicious hooking, because uh, I'm not aware of any antivirus monitor, neither uh, any other intensive tool which would be interested in, in putting obfuscated code in, into the functions. It was this one. So this, this is the one which will happen most of And yet another thing which we should take care of is uh, service structure table service table modifications. Service table, in many cases, is uh, pointed by KI service table address, and this, is, this symbol is located, well, the, the address pointed by this symbol is located inside uh, text section of Antares kernel exe, of course. Uh, so if we detect modification in KI, KI, KI service table, then uh, we need to treat uh, in other way, it, we, we are not trying to do, resolve it as a, as a jumping code, but just, just as an as a, as a absolute, absolute address, right? Uh, the problem here is that not always, uh, well, because, because the obvious way, of course, KI service table is not exported, right? Because this KI is a kernel internal symbol. So the obvious way from finding a service table is, uh, is this expression, right? It says KI. Key service descriptor table, which is exported, of course, which binds to, to the, well, to the descript service descriptor table. And first element and first field of this element is just just is just a pointer to this to this. Well, it's just a pointer to the service table which is currently used by the system. I have everybody knows this. Uh, well, this is obvious, right? Or not? If I don't have some experience with you with SDG uh, rootkits? No. Okay, so well, basically, KI service table could be in most cases found by, by by this expression, but not always, as it turned out, because well, some antivirus monitors like Kaspersky antivirus uh, uses. Uh, use uh, their own service table, so they modify it to point to their own uh, service table, so we don't know what kind of service table is. And uh, a guy called uh, 9210, uh, well, several months ago, published article on rootkit.com about how to find it in a very smart way. So this is the way SVV is using here. Uses here. Okay, finally, before, before the SVB demo. Oh, this, uh, I, think the, I think the red cable is not connected well. Because this is red and this is more red. Like, well, it's, it's just more red. If, if it was connected good, you would see this. So this uh, the SVB <coughs> uh, on the output gives one of the, one of the six uh, uh, vertex. It could be. Well, this is uh, this is green. This is green. This is this should be green. This should be yellow. This should be orange. 
this should be red and this should be deep red. Can you can you do something with this color? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, so you saw all the presentations with red colors. Okay, so we can set it anyway. <laughs> okay, so we can uh, we can get blue verdict, which means that there are not single modifications, not even those modifications which I which I showed you, uh, not even set kernel self modifications. Of course, this, this never uh, occurs in the wild, but I just added for the completeness. Funny thing is that. Uh, SVV gives you opportunity to disinfect the system, and you can specify to which verdict level, to which level you, you would like to disinfect. So this is zero, and you can specify that you want to disinfect to level zero, so you can make your system 100% virgin, and this, it still works. I tried for several hours, and it worked like like before. So. Uh, green. Okay, this should be more green, but okay, this is green, let's say, and this is the most typical verdict means that the system is okay. Yellow, this is the innocent hooking detected, one of the hooking which I just uh, described you. Orange, this is orange, not brown. Uh, but this is orange and it means, well, less innocent hooking detected. In most cases, it means debugger like hooking detected. Those hooking with, with missing files, well, yeah, with missing files in system 32, trying to direct to it. Red means it's very likely that we have something in the system, and deep red is, well, 99.9% .9 that the system is compromised. Okay, then can you switch to this? So let's start with some simple. Yeah, I should have done that before because it's, this laptop has only only 500 megabytes and this is really too uh, not uh, not enough for for the machine. Hopefully, we will leave this state. Any qu questions in the, in the meantime? Any questions? Right? So. Yeah, it's really slow. 
warming up uh, the system is here. Now we're verifying all the modules, camera and system levels, and here is system infection level uh, 5, deep red. Okay, we can now see some more details about it by putting slash m switch, which will show the modifications. Oh, let's say this one. Modification at address 77E279. Uh, this is function enum service, uh, enum services status. Uh, this function was obtained by reading export, export, uh, export table. Uh, oh, this is inside, inside some module, which is, which is printed, uh, ah, okay. I don't want to, to scroll that. And jumping code was detected. Target address was uh, one A E something. This address uh, is inside the module. We don't know the name. There is no name for this module, which uh, which is in this range. And module five is not present. And I think it should be also here, but in this place here. Let me see this. Here we see the endless uh, kernel modifications, those modifications which are which we expect. We can see uh, at the every modification, verdict level for this modification. This is 1111, so green. And then we see kernel 32. So we, we see some modification in kernel 32 driver, uh, DLL, kernel 32, and we have some modifications inside load library, create process, create process. And This is a mistake of this of this output function here because it, this should uh, this should mark the file as hidden, not not present, because it, it uh, puts the verdict five here. But well, the logic worked worked well, so we have verdict five, verdict five. So the the total system verdict is the the maximum of the verdicts of the single of the single uh, little verdicts. Um, Okay, maybe let's let's see another root, root kit like Hacker Defender, which is the most advanced of them, and we'll see how this infection works on this root just to save time. Okay, so 
again, if we have a system, well, we don't know anything about it. So again, we will start to the ZVD. Warming up is, uh, is just a delay. It's uh, because some root kits, uh, is, is to give some root kits time to infect, uh, to infect the detector. Okay. Again, we have some infections in some uh, system VLLs. Again, we have deep red, and again, let's see at the modifications. Again, we have an absolutely status function hold. This is not a surprise because many rookies are interested in hiding their own services, so we cannot see them in, in uh, <coughs> control panel services, right? So this is the function which is responsible for returning the, the services when the computer. So many rootkits, the simple rootkits, hook it. Because more clever rootkits will do it in a different way. Again, we have a jumping count detected here. Oh, we can th this is this is the expected code, and this is these are the bytes which are observed in the memory. E9. Everybody who knows a sender knows E9 is this. Anybody knows what the E9 opcode is for? Hmm? No. Yep. It's a relative jump, as Dave said. And this is the relative offset. So this is the jump code, and this is the decoded target address. And this target offset, offset, offset uh, doesn't belong to any module, which is uh, innocent hooking type 3 or something like this, or 2, I don't remember. And this is obviously very suspicious. So we have deep red. So let's see how the disinfection process works here. Um, well, let's see. I'll show you how that process explorer on this machine. Yeah, okay. We have process explorer. Oh, we have services here. Hopefully, you can see this. Well, there are not nothing suspicious here. Uh, let's run the disinfection process here. Uh, and we'll watch the process explorer and the disinfection. Uh, I'm not sure. And now we see a coordinator appear here. What SVP just, just, just did, it, it just restored all the code modifications which are marked as. Uh, as, as infection level two or more, and it restored it. It restored it, so uh, the functions are not hooked yet, uh, not hooked anymore. So process explorer now gets the, the real system view. Is it, is it clear? And we can also and we can also go to the main directory, for example, and do direct. And now we can see. Hi, Hikes the director, which was hidden before. Maybe I can show you. Yeah, it was. This is the, the, the this is the directory. I did at the uh, just 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 the beginning. There was no hikes there. After this infection process, everything is visible. And now, of course, to remove the rootkit from the system forever, we need to. Well, we need some antivirus approach to scan the registry and remove the services. Uh, okay, let's see how SVV behaves on a clean system. Uh, any questions? <coughs> Server architecture. It has its own kernel agent. It has its own module in the kernel. This kernel uh, restores the memory by just writing to the memory because it's in ring zero, so we can write to the memory. Yeah. So, it, so the restoration process is three, uh, three uh, consists of three phases. First phase is uh, first stage is to restore kernel modules. Then we restore our own process modules, and we don't need uh, any API for this because we just we can just and protect the code section of our own process, and we can just write to the uh, to the well, to the places which are altered. 
Then, when we have clean kernel and clean code in the user mode for this only process, now we can use API for accessing other process memory, uh, API like open process and write, write process memory or something like this. And then, at the, at the end, we, we, we repair other processes. Okay, let's see how it works on a clean system and uh, how it, what happens when I run Redmond, for example, here, register monitor. Get orange, orange because registry monitor is uh, as a tool which which puts on a temporary file in system 32 drivers directory, loads it and then deletes the file. So well, it might be some very simple rootkey, but it's more chances that there's this is a uh, well, system tracing tool. In a commercial product, it's it's solved like this. It should be solved by just um, displaying a message to the user that maybe he or she is using some some system tracing tool and uh, he or she is uh, kindly asked to, to visit Luna and we run the test and if the user doesn't know what the system tracing tool is then it means that he or she has the virus or a or or something like this. Uh, let's get rid of this uh, of this of this registry monitor. Oh we can see this registry monitor, it's, it, it constantly monitors all the registry uh, references. Now when I when I disinfect the system, well, the registry monitor is, is disabled, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Okay, I can do something very cool. Normally, pushing start button in Windows would result in, in thousands of registry keys read per second. But and just, just uh, for the end, let's see how uh, 100% virgin system looks like. It's, it's not a bug, it's, it's uh, 
as a feature which should be added to SVV uh, to make it more complete <coughs> because SVV verifies only dot text sections which I uh, believed will, will be enough to, to catch all the rootkits and it probably is enough to catch all the code modifying rootkits but uh, it doesn't catch some backdoors like EI root, root boot backdoor. Anybody heard about EI root boot backdoor? It was presented on Black Hat two months ago and this is quite funny, funny, funny bug. It's, it's, rather, it's, a, it's more backdoor than rootkit but it modifies anti and this driver, it hooks something in the dead and this driver uh, and it it, the code which is hooked is inside page sections. So another feature which should be added shortly to SVV is to check not only the text sections but all sections which are uh, which are readable and not, not writable, which are code and not writable. SVV is very um, as we takes care only about code virginity. There are many other ways to write root keys or backdoors uh, in such a way that, that they will not modify code sections. You can have such simple uh, root key or backdoor which well, root key which modify SDT, service descriptor table, or we can have such a sophisticated root key which modifies IRP, internet request uh, packet uh, tables in subdrivers, or to or or root key which does some, some interesting tricks with, with uh, configuration mo uh, manager module, or the registry management module. So we can, there, there are quite a lot of techniques to write rootkits which doesn't involve code modifications. Unfortunately, I observe lots of lots of uh, rootkits and backdoors in the wild, which are very simple rootkits which do modify code sections. So SVV is targeted only to, to detect those simple rootkits. Uh, SVV 1.0. Next version should, of course, include verifications verification of other system components like export import address table, TLS, SDT, ITT, uh, IRP tables, which I said just, 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 just a second ago, uh, and, these, and these pointers to, to get some backdoors and cover channels in kernel, and more. And now you, you should have the feeling that, well, you should, you should ask yourself now, I hope you, you are doing it now, that, okay, I said that code, code verification is necessary, right? Uh, we also need to verify uh, EAD, uh, input address table, and other, other objects in the system. So the, prob the, the question is, how many other objects can we list? Right? How many other objects can we, uh, can we define which SVV should check, or any other verification tool? So, we need to define all the vital operating systems, uh, sorry, operating uh, OS components, which which are vital. I mean, which uh, are vital in the sense that if they are changed, it means system compromise. And this is the idea for the OMCD project, Open Methodology Methodology for Compromise Detection. Uh, but this is the project which just basically, uh, which, which is which is for Windows system, and uh, it's going to be like this, 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 and this. Uh, our vital system components should be verified in this in this one. Uh, quite easy to bypass, as, as a recent article on wiki.com showed, for example. SDT restore by SE chunk, uh, which is a tool targeted only at, at verifying SDT table. Uh, well, this is another another vital system component which should be verified. Captain Hook is another public tool. It was sent to me by Chris Carroll when he saw SVV, and it's very similar to to SVV, with the exception that it doesn't take care about kernel self modification nor about about uh, detecting weakness and hooking. So it seems to be rather like a proof of concept tool. I sort by by Mr. Rose PGF USDC, whoever. <laughs> Here she is. And uh, this tool is, is not a, it's not really a, it's not really a very ver, um, integrative verifier. It's more enumeration tool because it allows to to see 
SDK contents with their V2 hooks, uh, all the assets, hidden processes, uh, etc. And the user needs to judge uh, by herself if it's a well, if it's a suspicious notification or, or is it, if, it, if the contents is suspicious or not. So this is the comparison of, of, the, of those tools. As said, SV10 is only targeted at code verification at the moment. Of course, in the future, it should extend to, to, to the other areas. Any questions? Because we are going to the second part, which will be very short, as well as the third part, which will be very short. So just just to just to make sure you you ask all the questions. Can I get some water? Okay, any questions? Well, I believe that there are so many 
methods for implementing rootkits in user mode that is not necessary to go into kernel. So those points are, are, are uh, intended to catch those simple user mode rootkits. Then we have user mode level memory, user mode, user mode level memory verification and kernel mode level memory, memory verification, which I'm going to discuss in the next two slides. And network activity analysis, because I hope that this methodology will uh, oh. Um, beca because all the first points are dedicated only to operating system and are cost based. And uh, the last point is uh, network activity analysis, so how to dis uh, discover well, some, some backdoors or some, some cover channels by analyzing network traffic from Windows machine. So this is from the other point of view. Okay, section E. These are just proposed, uh, proposed, uh, well, some some things which I which I just thinking about what to put in this section. This is still under under development, so uh, we can add some some other things here. First, we have discovering suspected but not hidden processes <coughs> and threats. To, to find out all those simple user mode rootkits too. Code section verification on user mode level, so this is what SVB does also. Yet, yet.